All praises to Yahweh, Ba'ashim Yahweh Shah, Ba'ashim Rekakadash, Yahweh being the name of the Heavenly Father, Yahweh Shah being the name of His only begotten Son, who they ignorantly call Jesus Christ. Now, proving who the fig tree is, is Judges 9 and 8. It says, the, the trees went forth on a time to anoint a king over them. And they said unto the olive tree, reign over us. And so this is talking about a king. You see, this is talking about a king. So let's get to the fig tree. It says, and the tree said to the fig tree, come thou reign over us. So they were looking for this fig tree to be a king to reign over them. Verse 11, but the fig tree said unto them, should I forsake my sweetness and my good fruit and go to be promoted over the trees, over the trees. The king, the fig tree was a kingdom that was going to reign over the people. Okay, so this is why the master of the law, who is Jehoshua, who they ignorantly called Jesus Christ, this is why he used this parable. Or use that as a parable. Okay, so let's go to Matthew. Let's see. Let's try chapter 21 and 21. And we're going to jump up to verse 19. It said, And when he saw a fig tree in the way he came to it and found nothing thereon but leaves only and said unto it let no fruit grow on thee henceforth and forever and presently the fruit withered away i mean the fig tree withered away okay verse 20 it said when his disciples saw it they marveled saying how soon is the fig tree withered away? Now, this fig tree is a kingdom. Keep that in mind. Verse 21, it says, Yahweh Shai answered and said unto them, Verily I say unto you, If ye have faith and doubt not, ye shall not only do this, which is done to the fig tree, but also if ye shall say unto this mountain. Now what was the mountain or the kingdom that was in rulership? The Roman Empire. Which had a nation ruling that Roman Empire. Because it was no such thing as a Roman nation. That was just the name of the, of the empire. But that empire was ran by one nation. It said, but also if ye shall say unto this mountain, be thou removed and be cast into the sea, it shall be done. And that sea is the people, cast amongst the other peoples of the, of the world. Now, that's the first parable that showed that the fig tree is synonymous with a kingdom. It's synonymous with the kingdom. And it's and he emphasized it said the fig tree had leaves only. They didn't have figs on it. So it had it hadn't developed. It wasn't all the way developed. It was in the early stages. When the figs come, then the figs fall off, then the leaves fall off. So when you get to chapter twenty four, it's talking about the leaves, but look how what, what level it's 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 um on. It says, "Now learn the parable of the fig tree, which his branch is yet tender, and put its forth leaves. Ye know that summer is nigh." It says, "So likewise ye when." Ye see all these things, know that it is near even to the doors. Now it says, 
when the branch is tender and put it forth leaves. Now, this is very significant because you're talking about the development of this fig tree or this kingdom. And so it's showing the season of this fig tree. It when the leaves develop, then you know that the summer is nigh and is going to grow out until it's full potential as a fig tree. Now, looking at the season, you can time when he is going to return and gather his elect. And so, when you see this fig tree, that it is a kingdom, and it's developed already, Um, let's go back to 21 because the disciples said something very significant. It says, and when, verse 19, and when he saw a fig tree in the way, he came to it and found nothing thereon, but leaves only, and said unto it, let no fruit grow unto thee until henceforth. And presently the fig tree withered away. Look at what the disciples said. They said, and when they, the disciples saw it, they marveled, saying, how soon is the fig tree withered away? See, they want to know when was that kingdom going to fall? When was that kingdom going to be uh, withering away? Pretty much meaning, when is that kingdom is going to die? When is that kingdom, in verse 21, going to be removed? And Yahweh shall let, let it be known, look at the leaves. So, reverse, not when the, uh, not only when, when the leaves grow, you know that summer is now, but when the leaves fall, you know that the kingdom is going to fall. Now, what is this mountain that he's talking about? See, he just wasn't just throwing a mountain out there. He said, in this mountain, they wasn't standing on no mountain. And even if they was standing on the mountain, it was he wasn't talking about a literal mountain. He was being specific. That's why he brought the fig tree into the picture. Because it was a king ruling over them. It was a kingdom ruling over them. Okay, let's get Jeremiah. Now, let's go back. Jeremiah 49, starting at verse 7, it says, Concerning Edom. Concerning Edom. Verse 10, But I have made Esau bare. I have uncovered his secret places, and he shall not be able to hide himself. See, from 49... He's uncovering Esau. Now, what is what is the name of the Edomites? Let's get uh, Jeremiah uh, 25. It says, Behold, I am against thee, O destroying mountain, says the Lord, which destroy all the earth. And I will stretch out my hand upon you and roll you down from the rocks and will make you a desolate mountain. Why is he calling the Edomites a mountain? Why is he calling Edom a mountain, a destroying mountain? Ezekiel chapter 25 verse 1. Over the word of the Lord came to me saying, Son of man, Set thy face against Mount Seir and prophesy against it. Verse 3, and say unto it, thus says the Lord God, Behold, O Mount Seir, I am against you. I am against you. Is that not what he just said in Jeremiah um, 
51. He said, Behold, I am against you, O destroying mountain. See, he's talking about Mount Seir. This is that mountain that was ruling the Romans. Okay, the Romans was ruling. That was the mount, mountain that he was referring to. That was the fig tree that he was referring to. Now, if people don't understand who Mount Seir is, let's get the history. Genesis chapter 36. And let's go ahead and go straight to the point. Verse 8, it says, Thus dwelt Esau in Mount Seir. Esau is Edom, meaning the whole nation. Verse 9, and these are the generations of Esau, the father of the Edomites in Mount Seir. You see, Mount Seir represents the Edomites. Okay, so he said, prophesy against Mount Seir. And this is how the parable, the parable is how he was prophesying against Mount Seir. If you have faith and doubt not that even in this mountain you should say it you should pray that it can be removed. Now look, verse five it says, Because thou has prophesied against Mount Seir and the Edomites, because thou has had a perpetual hatred hatred and have shed blood shed the blood of the children of Israel by the force of the sword in the time of their calamity, in the time that their iniquity had an end. Okay. Verse 10, we're going to get the key points. It says, because thou hast said these two nations and these two countries shall be mine, and we shall possess it, whereas the Lord was there. See, that's the northern kingdom and the southern kingdom. They possessing it. You see, that's, that's Jerusalem or Israel and over here in America. These two nations that have the Isra uh, Israelites, Israel and Judah, inhabiting it. Or these two countries. Now, um, let's get... Um, the last verse to let you know who Mount Seir is talking about. Verse 15, it says, As for did, as you did rejoice at the inheritance of the uh, house of Israel, meaning you, you took them captives, had them as slaves, because it was desolate, so will I do unto you, and you shall be desolate, O Mount Seir, and all I doom in you, even all of it. And they shall know that I am the Lord. So he's saying that I doom you, which means Edom. That's the way the Greeks say Edom. Is who he was talking about. All of the Edomites. And Lamentations break that down in verse chapter 4. It says 21. Rejoice and be glad, O daughter of Edom, that dwell in the land of Uz. See, that's where the Edomites dwell. That's where Job was at in the land of Uz. That's why he said the earth is given into the hand of the wicked because that was the ruling uh, mountain, Mount Seir, that was, and, and mountain represent kingdoms also, uh, that was ruling the world. But he said, Rejoice and be glad, O daughter of Edom. Verse 22, it says, The punishment of the iniquity is accomplished, O daughter of Zion, meaning the Israelites, the blacks, Hispanics, and Native Americans. He will no more carry you away in captivity, meaning the Edomites, the so-called white man, will not carry the uh, Israelites into captivity or slavery anymore. He will visit your iniquity, O daughter of Edom. He will discover your sin. So he's discovering the sins of the so-called white man and it's and making Esau bear, as Jeremiah um, 49 and 10 said. And so when you go to Matthew 32, now you can get an understanding. Matthew 24, 32, get an understanding of what he was saying. 
He said, Now learn the parable of the fig tree, which the branch is yet tender, and put forth leaves, you shall know that it's summer. Look at the, the development of this nation or the season that this nation is in. See, the, the, the king, the, the empire of America is the really the e empire of the Edomites. And the Edomites is running this uh, empire. It's their empire. Uh, Rome was not a man. The Romans, that's not a nationality. The nationality of those Romans was Edomites. This is like Mount Seir. Mount Seir was not their uh, their heritage. Mount Seir was not their name. It was the name of that mountain or that kingdom. Same thing with the Romans. That that was just the name of the kingdom or the empire. Same thing with America. Just the name of the empire. But the nationality of those people, the children, are the children of Esau, the Edomites. They are the ruling uh, king, the fig tree. You see? And that's how you learn the parable of the fig tree. It goes back to the nation of Edom who is ruling over the Israelites. And when the leaves are falling, and we've seen the leaves fall, we can see the empire of America fall. The, the IMF uh, worldwide is in debt. Trillions of dollars. 20, 30, 40 trillion dollars in debt in every country. That's that the empire of Esau is ruling over. Let's get that real quick. See, this empire is ruling, this fig tree is ruling over the other king. Revelation 17, 18, And the woman which thou sawest is the great city which reigneth over the kings of the earth. See, America is that great city that reigneth over the kings of the earth. And in America is the uh, root of the fig tree. It's Basria. And so this is how uh, these Edomites is ruling over the kings of the earth. Through America, their, their muscle, their military. And so, and this is, we can see this place is falling. It's falling fast. And famine is on the way. Let's see that real quick. Revelation 18 and 8. It says, therefore shall her plagues come in one day. We see that. Death, mourning all over the place. And famine. The stores is becoming empty. The shelves is becoming empty. And she shall be utterly burnt with fire. For strong is the Lord God who judged her. See, because the fire is going to be the nuclear missiles that destroy this place. That, that's going to burn uh, Babylon uh, utterly. And let's go right back here. Verse 16, how is it going to get burned? It says, the ten horns which thou sawest upon the beast shall hate the whore and make her desolate, naked, and shall eat her flesh and burn her with fire. See, the allies of America, the allies that's helping America rule is going to turn against her and burn her with fire. And why is they going to do that? Verse 17, for God has put it into their hearts to fulfill his will it's the lord's will to get these other nations to burn america with nuclear fire but i'm gonna leave it there all praise to yahweh by hashem yahweh shah by hashem kakadash the bonus to the elders pushing the truth peace to the elect the blacks hispanics and native americans descendants of slaves scattered around the globe our kingdom is at hand shalom